Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Dead by Daylight tutorial video. Today we're talking about Hawkins National Laboratory, which is the final indoor map that I have to cover on my channel. For anybody who doesn't know, that is the Stranger Things chapter with Demogorgon, Steve, and Nancy, though I assume most people are familiar enough with Stranger Things to know that, even if you haven't watched it. Hey guys, uh, future editing crush here. Nearly half a devotion later. Uh, I'm changing the intro, so basically this video is super long and I don't want to take more time than I need to to do a funny intro, so I just wanted to break down this video in words for those of you who, you know, it is a long video, so you might not need the entire video. So first thing that we always do is talk about the map. The map is going to be super helpful in you knowing what direction to go sometimes once you spawn in instead of just running blindly hoping for a room, okay? The next two things we're going to talk about after that is firstly, the six variations of long rooms and then secondly, the six variations of small rooms on the map. And after we do that, we're gonna talk about a couple tips about the portal room in regards to fast vaulting the window and different things to do over there. And we're gonna talk about going upstairs and why you should never fucking go upstairs unless you're full health and working on the gen. So anyway, with that being said, I don't want this video to be longer. Like, the old intro was really long, so I don't want this intro to be that long. I really appreciate all the support for the videos like this. They take me a long time to make and sometimes I spend so much time on the video that the value of the video seems less because I'm so used to the things that I've said already. So hopefully it's helpful. Let me know if there's anything that you think I left out or that I could maybe make a short like edit video on because again, I've, I've been working on this video so long, it seems kind of like, it, like it's a little bit just normal stuff that everybody should know. So like if you like, subscribe if you like me. And finally, I present to you the fucking Hawkins video. All right guys, so just like always, we're gonna start with a map. Now this is a map that I've drawn. I'm also gonna share with you the DBD wiki map which is a bit more detailed in like terms of the corners of the rooms and like the detail of like the exit gate areas and things like that. But these are things I don't care so much about. I care more about doorways and like RNGs. So hence my much simpler looking map. It's important to point out on my map that north is the portal room and south is the stairway. This might be weird for some people. Maybe they want it the other way around. Maybe they want um, like the DBD wiki map is like sideways so that one of the exit gate directions is north. But uh, this seems weird to me because if north is the exit gate area, then how do you determine? Like, it's just weird. Like, you can get flipped around and confused. So, for me, the portal room is north, and that's just how I like it. But anyway, moving on. The first thing I want to talk about is the exit gate RNG. So, unlike maps like Larry's, the doors will never spawn on the same wall. Uh, they'll always spawn on opposite sides, but they can be in any of those three positions on each side. So you could have one door on the top left and one door on the bottom right, or both in the middle. However, whatever, it doesn't work, but that's why there's like grayed out doors in some of those spots because those are the alternate positions for the doorways to spawn. Other than that, I want to talk about the location of rooms before we talk about other more detailed things. So you'll notice through the middle of the map, there are three long rooms and then there's five small rooms. The location of these rooms never changes, which means as long as you know where you are on the map, you have some idea what kind of room you might be around or to run into. Because there are long rooms that once you notice which generation you have, it might be a particularly strong room. And then if you know where you are and you know where you saw that room, you can work your way back to it to use that room or to abuse it to like its full extent, right? But anyway, we're gonna talk more about rooms later. Just know that the location of these different sizes doesn't change. So if you're looking for a long room, you should be able to find that. But what I wanna talk about first is doorways. And if you don't care about doorways, skip ahead. It's not gonna be super long, but it is kind of important. First of all, these red doorways at the top never move, never change. They're always open because those are the portal room doors that do not change. That is static, it doesn't change. Other than that, I have these pink doors marked on the map. These are the top and bottoms of all the long rooms and they will always, always, always be metal sliding doors. That doesn't mean that any of these green doors can't be sliding doors. It just means that these pink rooms will always be a sliding metal door. Any metal sliding door on the map can be one of three positions. It can be open, it can be closed, or it can be in a halfway state with, um, with you know, they sort of glitch kind of like they're trying to open. And that's because there is a generator nearby that can open them. And then we have the green doors that are mostly determined by what room spawns inside of them, but in some cases can be completely random. Anyway, now that we talked about how to read this map, we can talk about the different room variations and how to loop them. All right guys, so the first room I wanna talk about is the double long room, which I'm calling double long because there are double pallets in here and it's a double long pallet loop. And I call it that specifically because there is another room that is a double filler pallet room and you know another room that's basically just a pallet. So 
uh, to differentiate between all of them I call this the double long room and you have basically two pallets in this room and then four lockers which by the way might be cool for some kind of head-on play but uh, then you basically on each side you have smaller loops that you could use if you were barely gonna make it to this pallet or if you don't think the killer respects that hard or something I guess you could just run through the short loop but alternatively you have this super long area where if the killer respects a lot or if they try to do some kind of mind game shortcut or something like that, you might be able to utilize a decent loop. But the main thing that I want to talk about with this room is this little platform here, because if you want to come up here, first of all, you probably have a little bit of distance from the killer, but just as a nice tip, like a really nice tip, uh, when you fall off of platforms in Dead by Daylight, I'm sure you know you take stagger. For some reason, I call it stagger duration. I don't know if that even makes any sense, but you take stagger duration. And the killer doesn't, which means if you jump off of these little edges, you're gonna basically allow the killer to catch up a little bit, maybe even give them a free hit as soon as you hit the ground, depending how close they are. But a really cool thing that you can do here is there's this barrel. And if you run right up here, obviously you're on the same side as where the killer is gonna come up. So you're gonna wanna kinda have enough distance that they're already coming up the stairs by the time you reach this spot. Uh, but essentially you can run and take no stagger right off with this barrel. And it's sometimes difficult. Like, let me see if I can get myself to bounce. See, I did bounce there, but I still, if I took any stagger, I didn't notice. Uh, it almost feels like you're sliding and that you don't take stagger sometimes. But there are times where that barrel will also uh, give you a little bit of stagger. It just kind of depends if you hit it wrong or if you like completely fly over it. But yeah, that's my favorite thing to do in this room is to go up these stairs and the killer usually will start coming up the stairs as well and then i just take basically no stagger and slide around to the pallet uh the the only bad thing i would say about that is if you hit it at the wrong angle you'll slide like way over here and that's not what you want to do i'll do one more loop and show you uh hugging it really tight you basically want to hit it like this and see how i took a little bit of stagger there i don't know it's something that is maybe worth giving a couple of tries but it's really not that big of a deal like honestly i've talked about it too much to even to even justify it being in the, this part of the video. So anyway, that is the double long pallet room. All right, so the next room that I got in this generation of Hawkins, I'm calling the Q room. This is the only room that I've named that I can't really justify because this platform doesn't really look like a Q. It might even be like an A or something, but I've already given another room the letter A. So um, yeah, welcome to the Q room. Nothing super complicated. Again, a lot of these rooms are not that complicated. It's just a matter of knowing anything about them because I feel like some survivors just struggle with even having five seconds to look at the room because they don't go into KYFs or they don't go to Hawkins that often. They always bring offerings or whatever the case might be. Um, so yeah, basically you have two pallets. You have a pallet here, which has a shorter blind side to the loop and a longer, not so blind side to the loop, which is an important thing to learn. Obviously something like Huntress would be better on this side for the Huntress uh, and you know, on this side, I don't know. There's there's pluses and minuses to each side. This isn't a video about loops in general. Just know you have a pallet there and you also have a pallet here. This pallet, I think, is a little stronger than the other pallet because if the killer's on this side and you drop the pallet, you can zone them in this little pocket and sometimes this door is open. You can go through there. Surprise. Oh, actually, this door is open as well. So sometimes these doors are open. It's just something to know. Anyway, other than that, you have the drop down here, which if for those of you who don't play killer, it's actually kind of annoying for killers to try to drop through here. Just like survivors, you sometimes bounce almost over it. Killers almost have, in my experience anyway, killers have to almost completely stop unless they go into the lid, into the open lid to stop their body. Because uh, for some reason, they'll just bounce. They'll literally ramp right over this and not even get to fall into it. So if you decide to use those, it's actually not a bad idea. I don't use them that much, but just know that killers actually have to focus a little bit to fall in here. I mean, unless they're super good. I, I don't know. In my experience, if they're not super good at killer, um, they're going to have a hard time falling into those. Other than that, you got a single locker here, a double locker on this side, and a vault right here. Something to know about these kind of maps is typically there's some kind of stairway leading up to a vault. And if the killer anticipates that you're going to take the vault, they might hang out at the bottom of the stairs. So it could be a good idea for rooms like this just to bait like literally run and then just slide and just hit the stairs or run bait and then they start coming up and then vault and then or maybe run bait and then drop into the hole it's really up to you you don't have a lot of super good mind games in rooms like this in my opinion there's definitely better rooms but 
uh, e either way, you have two pallets in this room, a vault, a drop, lockers. You have so many resources in these rooms, whereas like the small rooms or especially the hallways, you literally just have like pallets and like a vault, but there's like four resources in this room. So anyway, I'm not gonna spend any more time on this room. Let's talk about the next one. All right, guys, the next room we're gonna talk about is the Z room. This is called the Z room because it has the stairs on that side that go up, they come across, and then these stairs come down the opposite way, kind of like a backward Z. Before I talk about the platforms, I wanna talk about the pallets. And these pallets are super similar in the fact that they have this little desk on them. The curvature and side of the desk that the pallet is on is different, but they basically share that in, 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 in they basically share that across both loops. They both have that side. One loop has an alternative side that is this square. And it's not bad, but compared to this side, I just wanna point out that this loop has a much stronger side to it. And so I guess the point of saying that is that these two loops are not equal. Um, and the inside of this loop is okay, I guess. It's not bad, just it's, you know, it's. It, I would prefer this side personally. Um, I just, I don't know why it just feels important to point that kind of stuff out that these pallets are not perfectly identical. And in that sense, they're not perfectly equal in their value, so. The next thing I wanna point out is how to loop the platform. And so in any case, you're gonna be coming up the stairways, whether you're on this side or if you're on that side. And the only difference between the two sides is this drop down is open on one side and it's not on the other side. So if you come out this side, I almost never see a case where it makes sense to jump into that hole unless the killer's actual dog shit and you don't think they're gonna be able to drop down in there very quickly. But in most cases, you're gonna have two real choices. And the real choices are, um, well, unless you have balanced landing, the two choices are, uh, the killer is really close, so you have to take a slow vault, or a medium vault, sorry. Or the killer is far away, so you can afford to run around to the second vault and do something else. The reason I say medium vault here and not going for a fast vault is even though you could probably turn out and get a fast vault here, it doesn't really make sense to give up that kind of distance to get a fast vault because the killer is going to have enough distance on if you have If, if the killer is close enough that you need to take this vault and not that vault over there, then they're close enough that you probably should just take the medium vault and get on with your day, right? And in most cases, if you're by this opening, the killer's gonna drop down and come out of here, or they might still vault behind you. But if you're on the other side, they're definitely gonna have to just vault behind you. Um, but in any case, the old way to loop this room used to be really good because you could run through here, drop here, take, no oh my God, I actually did it on camera. You could take, no <laughs> you used to, be able, used to be able to do basically what I've just done and take no stagger. Basically like the, the double long pallet room it does. Um, but you can't really do that anymore. They've changed it so that you slide off the railing. You can't really bounce off the railing like like the double long pallet example I talked about earlier with the barrel that prevents stagger. You used to be able to prevent stagger and fall and just keep infinitely looping and the killer would try, try to follow and do the same thing but it was just in a way that you could almost infinite the killer in this location before. And nowadays they've changed it so that you can't really avoid stagger, although I did kind of do it there for a moment. Anyway, since that was changed, the new thing to do is whichever side you come up, if you have enough distance, you actually want to run through the center and vault the other window, the further one away. And what the killer's going to do is cut you off at the drop down or they're going to follow you to the end. So that's, the, that's really the only thing you can do in the Z room now. I know that's probably common sense to most people. Um, but I just, I hate when I see a survivor run in this room and it's, they literally just do this. And they, they leave. So many survivors don't even use these platforms. Like they're afraid to use the platforms. Long story short, a lot of these rooms, I'm just going to explain very basic things that I think really will help the average like solo queue survivor that I get that are like, I feel bad because they maybe haven't gone to Hawkins before. So anyway, next room. All right, guys, this room is the LT room. We call it the LT room because it is an L right here. And then it is a T right here. It goes up and crosses kind of like a T. Obviously, it's round up here, but it's the same thing. Uh, this room is really good when that door and this door open. But on this variation, I got a closed door, which is actually good because I can explain when it's bad to use. Um, well, when it's worse to use. Because when the other door is open, and I'll show you a clip now, you can run up and vault this, this vault and basically go through the second door and through the hallway coming up the other side and vaulting the window again. And unless the killer has a power to catch up or their bloodlust three already, or whatever the case may be, um, in most cases, this is basically an old school infinite where you can vault the window three times before it locks out. They basically won't really catch up unless, the, unless they're decent at the game. They have to be pretty decent at the game. And even then you're still probably gonna get two vaults out of it. And once it does lock out, the killer might be too close to do anything else cheeky, but you could use like a pallet or something inside this room, come back up here and use the second vault, which is back here on the T. 
And the second vault is just like the Z room in the way that the killer is just gonna drop down through here or potentially a vault right behind you and you have to figure out what to do because if they drop down, they're between you and the pallet. Assuming, of course, they can drop down pretty close to when you're dropping down. And maybe if they're really far behind you, it doesn't really matter because you can drop down, start running, and then they drop down and you're already basically at the pallet. But um, yeah. I keep talking about these rooms in isolation, but it's not bad either to string the rooms together. Like if you know where the next long room is, for example, this is the next long room right here. Um, you could, if that door was open, then you could come into this door and use maybe this pallet or whatever the case may be. Um, but I do try to, I'm trying to, I try to make the clips like segments. So talking about each room isolated is basically the best way to do the video and learning to string loops together is just gonna be something maybe for another video. Anyway, L room, going around the wall, all the way around, the killer might catch up at some point, but it's you can almost always, when both doors are open on the LT room, go around the outside and vault three times until the window is blocked, using pallets or whatever is near the room, other rooms, whatever, after that. And yeah, LT room. Okay guys, these next two rooms are super simple, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about them. The first one is the double filler room, which is the double filler pallet room. It just means that it has two filler pallets. You've seen these pallets on other maps. Of course, these pallets are cosmetically unique to Hawkins, but they're just the same old filler pallets that we've talked about a hundred times how to loop. So I'm not gonna talk about this room at all. And the last room of the six generations of long rooms that you can get is what I'm gonna call the God pallet room. And it's a God pallet room because if you drop the pallet on the right side, the killer has no way to get around it without kicking the pallet. They could go all the way out of the room and go around it, sure, but if you just stood at the pallet in that case and vaulted back, there would be nothing they could do. They would have to go all the way around the room again. And, and so the one important thing about the God pallet room is there is a stairway right next to the pallet on one side where if you blindly went and dropped the pallet and the killer preemptively went around to the stairs, then there is a chance that they're gonna hit you around the God pallet if, if you're absolutely, if you're playing as badly as you possibly could. Keep in mind that if they are on the stairway side, they can just go up around the pallet. So maybe try to reverse them to send them to the other side or maybe drop the pallet and if they're going up the stairs, vault back preemptively. Or if you're, if you're full health, probably just take a hit because it's a god pallet, but. Anyway, that, that is the sixth and final generation of long room that you can get. Of course, there's only three spots on the map for it to spawn, so you only get three of the six any one time you roll the map. Anyway, other than that, we're gonna talk about the small rooms now, so let's, let's talk about those. All right, guys, so small rooms, just like the big rooms, there are six different variations of them, although the difference is that there's five spots on the map from the spawn, so often you'll see more of the variations of the small rooms than, than the big rooms. The first small room we're gonna talk about is called the A room, because it looks like a lowercase a to me, um, at least a little bit. There's another one right after this that's gonna be called the squid room, because it's very similar, it just has a second set of stairs, but they're basically both the same room. These rooms are very similar because the vault ends where the stairway begins, which means the killer will most often try to double back. So the play to do on these rooms is to go upstairs, bait the vault, and the killer's gonna double back. And that hesitation is gonna start burning time in that chase that you would have otherwise gone down if you just instantly vaulted, right? So even if you baited a couple times and it gets you killed, that's more worth to me than instantly vaulting it and just getting downed much faster. Um, and it's way less common, I think, for killers to dedicate the, the first time to the vault, so I always bait the first time, I consider baiting the second time, and by like the third time, I'm almost guaranteed to vault, but it really depends what kind of kill you're getting, because again, this is a 50-50, and that's just how 50-50s work. The squid room, just like the A room, it's exactly the same, it just has two stairways and two vaults, so baiting the vault is what you wanna do. In the squid room, it might even be smarter to vault the opposite side of where the stairs came up, but even then, the killer could just continue straight, so it's probably a good idea to bait these windows as well. But just keep in mind, these small rooms aren't very good. I always try to stay in the big rooms on these maps. Most of these small rooms force like crazy 50-50s that are like close 50-50s, where you might not even have time to dead hard at the bottom. So anyway, that's the first two rooms, the A room and the squid room. Okay, so these next three rooms don't have much to be said about them. They're basically just filler pallet rooms. The first one is called the single filler, and it's a pretty decent loop. It's just like a normal filler pallet loop. So again, I won't talk about filler pallets. We've talked about them a million times before. But the next two rooms are also filler pallets, but they're unsafe filler pallets, especially this first one. The thing about unsafe pallets, and we've said this before, and I'm gonna say it right now, is when you use an unsafe pallet, you need to get a stun, and you need to immediately leave the loop. It's so hard to do what's called panic vaulting and not get downed and, not, and also manage to escape. 
it's possible, but it's something that you just shouldn't put yourself in a situation to do. You wanna make the best situation happen, and the best situation is getting a stun with an unsafe pallet and getting as much distance as you can, because if you do stay near that pallet, especially some of these are a little bit more blind, um, the killer can mind game them kind of easily or make you panic vault in a way, and you don't wanna be stuck doing that. So with any filler pallet, you kinda wanna get a stun, but with an unsafe filler pallet, you want to greed the stun super hard, and if you get it, you wanna make distance. So yeah, that is basically all I can tell you for these rooms. The final room is a room I like to call the O room because the top is basically just a round circle that you can run straight around. This room is very similar to the first few rooms we talked about, the A and the squid room, because you are baiting the window. That's what you do all over this map. This entire map is about baiting windows and hoping the killer starts to double back. If the killer doesn't start to double back, you'll notice that and you'll know that you have to start vaulting windows first time every time. And no matter what, in any case, no matter how well you know the killer, it's a 50-50. So if they anticipate you're gonna switch it up, they might switch it up too. So the O room is the only small room that I kind of like because going up there, there's a nice little corner that would be really, that is actually really nice for a 360. And other than that, I always bait the window first time and I love, I don't know what it is about the O room, but I just love watching the killer double back there. And that's what they'll oftentimes do. The thing is these, just like the first two rooms, these vaults end where the stairs begin. So the killer is gonna always start doubling back towards the stairway if it looks like you're gonna vault it. And when you don't vault it, they start to get cocky, whatever, whatever. Anyway, there's always a pallet at the bottom, just like the first few examples, there's almost always a pallet at the bottom to use as well. So if you do mess up, and as long as you have a little bit of distance, you can probably burn that pallet. But again, that's one of those situations where I'm like, come on, why do I see survivors run in this room and just instantly burn the pallet? Just run up the stairs, do a bait, you might win the 50-50, and now you've gained, what, 10 seconds to your chase? All right, guys, now that we covered every room, uh, variation now we can talk about a couple of extra things and this part of the video is going to be a quick summary of fast vaults and how to get them in hard places but also it's going to be a little bit about entity blocking windows and why i don't really care for this window in hawkins so anyway if you haven't seen my tutorial on fast vaults or you're just not good at fast vaults i will give you a crash course now and you can watch the video yourself if you decide to do that there's a couple of different ways to get fast vaults in these tight locations the most popular one in my opinion and the best one that i like to use is to basically just hold one directional key on your keyboard and just to flick your screen. And for me in this case, that's holding W and flicking my screen left and then flicking my screen right and also pressing spacebar almost as late as possible. If you look at the bottom of your screen, and I say this in my t vaulting tutorial video, if you look at the bottom of your screen, it will say vault for a moment and it will quickly switch right at the end to say fast vault. This is just how the game works. If you press spacebar too early, it's always gonna be a slow vault. So if you're struggling with fast vaults and you think you have the whipping of your screen down and you, you know you already try everything else, try pressing spacebar as late as possible or just watching the bottom of your screen and that should fix that. Anyway, I don't wanna to talk too long about fast vaults, but I'm just saying if you vault from the inside to the outside and the killer goes around and doesn't vault behind you, they're gonna force you to vault back inside. And then if you decide to stay in the loop or if they are just too close that you have no other choice but to vault back a third time, you're going to entity block the window and you're gonna be stuck in the portal room. And that's gonna guarantee the killer a hit. If they don't vault the window behind you, they just go back around. It's gonna guarantee them a hit or a down. So I understand if you, you know, you're in a dire situation, but if there's a pallet nearby instead, or you had dead hard or something else so that you could change the course of direction or whatever, I do not think this window is that good, even if you get a fast fault. Unless you're just trying to flex and you have dead hard or adrenaline's about the proc or, or whatever, I don't think vaulting this window is that good, but it is fun to get a fast fault on, so of course I'm gonna include it in the video. Anyway, that's everything about this vault. All right guys, so before the video ends or before it gets way longer than I've already wanted it to be, I wanna talk about the upstairs for a minute. And more, most importantly, I wanna talk about why you should never fucking go upstairs, especially when you're in chase. So let's talk about that now. Upstairs is super unsafe. There's really unsafe windows. There can be unsafe pallets. Um, the drop down isn't really that good for you if the killer's behind you, even if you have balanced landing, like it's a really far drop and the killer is just gonna catch up to you. So the only time I would say go upstairs is if you're full health and you want to work on the gen because the killer can't pressure that gen very easily. They have to also go all the way upstairs to pressure this gen. And if they don't have like barbecue or any reason to know that you're up there, um, there's not a lot of reason for them to go up there. But with that being said, sometimes I like to do this as killer as well. A killer will approach the stairs or something like that. So your terror radius becomes greater while you're on that gen. And they'll go around in a way that makes you think they're coming upstairs. And you might preemptively drop down the hole 
but actually the killer will be moving in a way that they will be positioned below the hole so that you will drop down. This works on kind of worse survivors, so hopefully, you know, you guys don't do something like that, but it's really fucking funny when it works on survivors, so just be aware that sometimes that, I, there's no real way to know, I guess, if that's happening, but if you suspect that the killer is doing something like that, just know that it is a fun thing to do as killer to force survivors to think you're coming upstairs and then actually be waiting for them at the bottom of the hole. Or you know a trapper might trap it or a hag might trap it. Probably more of a hag than a trapper, but anyway, don't drop down the hole. Work on the generator if you're full health, but be aware of like grabs and things like that. Do not run up here in the middle of a chase. But one thing I want to say, and uh, I actually saw this on, I think, one of Yerv's highlights. So, you know, shout out Yerv for introducing me, at least, to this to this strategy. Of There's three lockers, and if you have quick and quiet head on, it's even better. But I really don't think you would even need a perk to help you with this if the killer isn't paying attention to the notification. Basically, you run in this room and instantly vault in a locker. And the killer comes around the corner, and now it's a guessing game of which lock you're in. Which, even if you don't have head on, if they guess correctly and you jump out at the same time they press spacebar, it might suck them onto another locker, forcing them to open the other one. If you do have head on, they will wait usually a second to think about which locker you might be in, which might give you enough time to proc your head on. And then if they open the door, then they're going to get head on stunned. Or the funniest case scenario, you don't even have any perks, you don't even jump out of the locker, they just pick the wrong locker, you fast vault out. Maybe you climb into another locker secretly if you're not bleeding and there's not blood in front of your locker or something like that. But yeah, it's actually kind of a fun, cool idea to mess around with these three locker setups. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, that's that's basically everything I can tell you about Hawkins. I did cut some stuff out about door generation and dead zone generation in the hallways, but that is not really helpful on the spot anyway. Even if you knew everything ahead of time, it wouldn't help you in a live match. It's just kind of like something to know, like Dead by Daylight trivia or something. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, liking and commenting helps spread the video to other people. You can, of course, show your friends the video if you think it will help them. I see so many survivors struggle on Hawkins that especially newer survivors could probably learn a lot from just seeing the rooms and knowing like there's six of them and this is the six of them. Whatever. I don't want to make this video 30 fucking minutes. So here's a nurse clip about the room that you can get into as nurse. And I'm going to leave it off with a blooper. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good night, guys. Can you uncloak so that they know that I'm not running into Bing Bong if they hear you grunting? Perfect. And I met what the fuck.